What's up guys? So, this is going to be sort of a review. It's not going to be really in-depth or anything uh, like I've been doing these past years. Uh, I just want to cover some basic points. I'm not going to rate the game either. Uh, it's pretty much last year's game. We all know that. But I'm going to talk about some of the things that make this year different. And most of it is pretty bad. So, Let's just get into it. First off, I knew this game was going to be cut and paste. I was, I think, one of the first people, at least in the community, to talk about it. And I said that this was going to be a cut and paste uh, for several reasons, right? You had Monster Games leaving. There was a lot of changeover, people being let go at 704, and a new publisher taking over. That being Monster Games. So with all that craziness going on, it's bound to have an effect on development of NASCAR E5. Also, we don't really know when development actually started. Some people say it started as far back as August of last year. Which at that point, you know, Monster Games had was still kind of involved. So that's neither here nor there. Then Motorsport Games announced that the game would be releasing uh, two months earlier this year. So that just cemented the fact even further that, yeah, don't expect much. And I said from the start that because there's a new publisher taking over, they're hiring new developers, there's so much going on. This game really, I don't think it's fair to judge this new group of people based on this game and I still stand by that so on the game itself the, the the fact that they just didn't add much I can't really blame these guys so for that I said I'm gonna give these, these guys a pass and I'm gonna support it support the game just for the sake of you know showing support to the company and this is where I think I slipped up a bit and I have this is where I'm going to criticize myself just a little bit. You guys who've been watching me for the, you know for a long time know that I've been a very uh, adamant uh, opponent to DLC microtransactions and you know this business model of releasing games with you know issues just to be patch them later. This entire gaming industry's business model is a problem. And I've been talking about this for a long time. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know that. But I've been talking about this stuff for, for years. And I've been doing videos for eight years. And I've been talking about it. And this time around, because of the circumstances surrounding, you know, this changeover and how abrupt it all seemed to happen. I just, I was being realistic, knowing we're not getting much this year. And I allowed myself, against my better judgment, to fall into this narrative that, that I've always fought against of we have to support developers and buy their products so that they have more resources to make a better product the next time and continue that process and I've always opposed that and this time like I said against my best judgment I slipped up a little bit now I still believe that it's not fair to say NASCAR E5 is a monster game uh, I'm sorry a mo motorsport games product or even this this group of guys it's not however I was willing to give them a pass based on other reasons as well. Releasing the game earlier to me makes sense. Releasing NASCAR games in, in, in the fall never made sense to me. Also, I want to just want to move on from this current build of games. I want to go and really push things 
to where these games should have been and beyond. And the only way to do that is to start from scratch and just rebuild from the bottom up. And that's what these guys have planned. They came on board. They have plans for this. They have told me personally that they are looking to invest a lot more money. That And, and a lot of the things they mentioned are things that I support and I want to see in career mode and all this other stuff. The question is, you know, developers and pl publishers, they it's routine to promise the moon and the stars and under-deliver. Very few publishers or developers actually deliver on, the, on what they promise. These guys seem like very well-intentioned people. Everything I've heard from other people who've met them say these are great people. They want to build a good game. And I believe them. I don't think people consciously wake up and say, I want to build a piece of crap game and rip people off. I don't think people, for the most part, I don't see that. I think they really want to do a good job. So the problem isn't uh, being lazy or anything like that. The problem is that what you want to do, which is what's best for the game, and what business dictates, sometimes, many times, collide with each other. So you might want to do something in a game, but you kind of have to push that aside because for business reasons, you got to push something else. And that takes up time and resources. So recently I mentioned that one of the biggest mistakes 704 made in this current series of NASCAR Heat Games is introduce a dirt series. It's not that I'm against adding a series. We used to have, you know, more than the, the top three series. We used to have modifieds and things like that with EA games going back 15 years ago. So I'm not against that. I actually like that. My problem is deciding when and how to do that. And when you release a game like NASCAR Heat Evolution, which was a bare bones demo, that's all it was. It had nothing other than actually just racing on the track. When that's what you have, the last thing you should be thinking of is we're going to start working on adding a dirt series. The right decision would have been let's focus on Trucks Xfinity and Cup and surrounding that, fleshing everything out, making sure everything works properly, making sure we have stats, properly implemented stats, making sure we have customization, making sure we have caution replays, making sure we have presentation. So that the game feels immersive for the player. And then, as you move along, maybe start adding stuff. You can't add a, a dirt series, which required adding all these new tracks, fantasy tracks, all this other stuff. Then you got to work on a completely different set of physics for dirt. And you still don't have a paint booth. You still don't have caution replays. You still didn't have at the time didn't even have a track map stats were still a problem and your folk this is what the problem is so that decision was one of the worst decisions that made this series held it back think about where we would be with NASCAR Heat 5 if they never added a dirt series we could have had Caution replays, we could have had presentation, post-race, pre-race, commentary. We could have had a deeper career, uh, uh, you know, owner's mode, maybe higher uh, teammates like we see in Formula One uh, 2020. We could have had a paint booth or at least a much deeper and better uh, detailed customization than what we have now. 
we could have had a smoother running game, maybe even running at 60 frames. Could have had all that which would have substantially increased the playability of the game and made it deeper and more immersive for people to enjoy. The Dirt series, it's nice. I know a lot of people like it, but it didn't really add anything to the overall product. And it took a lot of resources to get that in the game and, and add all that content. So we could have been so much further along by now. But because of those decisions and DLC paint schemes, which I'll talk more about in a second, we're, we're stuck where we are. Still asking the most basic, for the most basic features. Five games in. And this logic of giving our money for inferior products so that the developer can use that money to make a better product, it doesn't exist in any other business uh, area anywhere. This is not a business model for anything, except in the gaming industry, because we've allowed it and accepted it. Buying games that come with issues and bugs waiting for them to fix it afterwards. Uh, buying games that have less and less content because they're taking stuff out of the game to put it, repackage it as DLC and resell it to you. Things we used to get as part of the main game. Just imagine walking onto a, a car dealership, buying a brand new, or, or going to buy a brand new car and finding out there's no air conditioning, there's no radio, and there's no windshield wipers. The most basic features that are on every car and the and the salesman telling you well this stuff is available as as extras will you buy you pay extra and we'll install it for you no problem that's what DLC is you would never buy a car under those conditions and it would be ridiculous for a car man manufacturer to build cars that way Nobody would buy cars that, that lie under those conditions. So why is it that we have become complacent with this in the gaming industry? It's partly our fault. And this time around, I have to include myself. I have to criticize myself because I've always been against this stuff. And this time, for all these reasons that I just told you, I just felt like I'm just happy to move on from this current build. I just want them to move forward and put their all into the next gen and finally deliver something that we've all been screaming for for, for almost, uh, you know, since the first Eutechnics game. And I, I allowed myself to, to slip into that logic, which I've never done before. So I have to, I'm calling myself out for a second. And I'm I'm you know, I, I, I gotta wake up from that. So it it doesn't work. That business model is a is has no logic to it. And you know how I know it doesn't work? Because we already have proof. History has taught us that game developers don't necessarily take profit from games to focus on making a better game. If they make better games, it's because they choose to. It's because they're motivated to do it. It's because they want to sell a better product. It's not because people are giving them money for inferior products and saying, I hope you do better next time. That has no logic to it. <clears throat> and I've always said that. So, this time around, I, you know, I got to admit, I slipped up a bit. So, moving on from that, I'm going to show you some other stuff. Okay? As you see here, this year, 
these schemes. This is one that comes with one extra. As you can see, the rest of them don't have extra paint schemes. So we're, you're getting less this year than ever before. That one has one extra. So there's two so far. Look at it, all of these cars. This, this one has one extra. That's three. Four. Five. That's it. Well, six. There you go. That's it. No, seven. This is one. This one has one. Seven. Eight. No, that one showed two. So that's eight and nine. Way, way less. So they. this is another decision that Motorsport Games has to own. So I, like I said... They're not fully responsible for NASCAR E5 as a game, as far as development, but they're responsible for choosing to sell it at full price, for releasing it two months early, unfinished, and broken. And now, for choosing to repackage all of the extra schemes that you got last year as part of the main game, and that's all going to be bundled with DLC. Just to make DLC more valuable to people. To make them feel like I have to buy this. Because you gave us nothing. And this is why I hate DLC. Why I've always been against it. DLC is not always a bad thing. In the past we've seen with. Remember Grand Theft Auto 4. You had the Ballad of Gay Tony. You, you had the, uh, the one with the motorcycle. Club, the Motorcycle Gang, DLC. You had in Red Dead, the original Red Dead Redemption, the Undead Nightmare Pack. And in uh, The Last of Us, the original, The Last of Us had uh, another DLC story. All four of those DLC uh, packs were fully fleshed out stories. Chapters to the game that you already played, which was already a great game. That is when DLC is actually a positive thing. You're adding something real. That gives you a completely different experience. But that's rare. You rarely see that anymore. Now all you see is skins, trinkets, uh, paint schemes that don't add anything to the game. That doesn't make this game better. And instead of focusing on... Okay, give me one second. Man, these fucking phone numbers. Scammers everywhere. Anyway, sorry about that. Where was I? Okay, these schemes don't add anything to the game. Could have added more stuff. Caution replays. Or, or, you know, whatever. So, you see there, that's one thing they did. And that, to me, is insulting as a consumer. Okay? So, that's another red flag that Motorsport Games and 704 have to own. Here's another thing. And this falls right along the lines of the decisions that these developers make. What are they going to focus on? when they're ignoring major basic features. Watch this. Nobody asked for this. Nobody. Nobody asked for Pro League uh, esports drivers to be in the game or these paint schemes. Now I'm going to say something positive about these paint schemes. In my opinion, they look really good. Okay, this is a sidebar. Look at these schemes. I know NASCAR is considering changing the way that the numbers are, putting them somewhere else, and to give more room for the sponsors and stuff. I'm not going to get into that because that's another subject. But I got to be honest. You know, I'm 
like everyone else, I prefer to keep the numbers here. But being realistic, you know, I don't. I think they are going to change. This doesn't look bad. You look at these schemes. I like them. I like the way they look. And I'm sure that sponsors are thrilled to have more real estate to show off their stuff. And I don't think the numbers look bad at all in the rear quarter. And some of them look better than others, right? I prefer the numbers that are really big and take up like this whole quarter. Bear with me. I'm, this is a quick sidebar. But these, these schemes look good to me. Right? You see the number placement, the sponsor. Look at how big that number is. It looks good. I like this. It's just me, just an opinion. Don't attack me for it. I know most of you guys are going to disagree on this, but look at this. This looks great. Look at that giant one back here. It doesn't look bad. This this scheme I I don't really care for. This one's ah, but still, the, my my point is these schemes look good. And my favorite is uh, coming up, but you can see. Look at all of this state that they added to the game, right? So I'm, I'll get to that in a second. Stuff doesn't look bad. I like it. Pay attention to how good the cars look, the car model, the finish, the polish, the detail. Okay. Think about how much time and effort it took for these guys to throw this into the game. Something nobody, nobody asked for this. Nobody asked for these guys. Okay? Why is this in the game? Because they're sending, they're trying to appeal to esports people, to pro league drivers. They want to appeal to you and get you to say, hey, I wish I was in the game. Maybe next year they'll put me in the game. Let me get involved more in this esports pro league stuff. This is all promoting esports. The same thing with the testing. That's all really for online racers. So, and look how good the car model looks. How, how much time did they put into this? And meanwhile, they... I'll get to this in a second. Where was, let's see. Move forward. All right, we're seeing more, more of this stuff. Let me get to the... These cars look good. Here's, here's, this car looks amazing. Look at this, look at the, creati the creativity in this scheme. You got ketchup on one side and you got mustard on this side. Look how cool this looks. Look what, how cool the number placement is. Everything. Look how polished and that car looks. Looks amazing, right? That, that looks amazing. How much time and effort they put into this. And nobody, nobody asked for this. And it doesn't really add anything to the game, by the way. Look at this. And then you're going to see what your custom car looks like or and you're going to see a clear difference in the quality of the overall car model every single car, okay this is mine right this is the custom one right you already know all the templates that are there some of them just have one stripe going here another one has the stripe going down there no effort put into these templates which are the same and I, I, I'm ha I, I don't think that the templates they're going to come up with and release later down the line are going to be much more creative at all. No creativity. No time put into it. Look at the car model. And there is a fall off in the quality. The number fonts are too small. They're not even the right size. How much effort would it take to correct these things? And I'm not even... Talking about the bugs and glitches, which I'm assuming they're going to patch. That is what's insulting. They took all that time and effort to put garbage that doesn't nobody wanted in the game. Nobody asked for esports drivers in the game or those paint schemes. And yet, we have to hear in, uh, things like we could, you know, 
we couldn't implement stuff, you know, extra these extra things people want because there's not enough time or resources. Right, because you focus on things that don't matter. That's not even including all the other DLC paint schemes. And I'm going to tell you right now, half of those schemes are repetitive. It's the same scheme with a decal miss, uh, moved to another spot. That's that's one of my big points. This is why I don't want them. You got to focus on the main game, fleshing things out. And here's another thing coming up. This is something else that really just annoys me. Now, we already have load screens in the game. But now they've added advertisements. And you got this Fanatec advertisement, as you see right there. And it's part of every load screen. And this is something else I've talked about in the past and in, in a video a while back about that these developers are starting to, they're going to start implementing advertisements in load screens and stuff like that. Now, in this case, you, would, you could say, well, there's already a loading screen. What difference does it make? And to an extent, that might be true. But when you give these people an inch, they take a foot. It's enough is never enough. And if you, look, you see how long the load times are compared to last year, they're slightly longer. So why are these load times longer when you really didn't add much to the game? Adding DNFs? Adding uh, a test mode, adding, you know, number fonts and the ability to change the color on the wheels and stuff. That shouldn't increase the load times uh, in these loading screens. It's bad enough you're paying full price. It's just all of these things together. It's It feels like death by a thousand paper cuts. The game is enjoyable. When you're racing on the track against the AI, it is fun. Okay? Most tracks are, are fun. And if they fix all the bugs and glitches, you know, it, it, it'll improve things just a little bit. But if you don't own NASCAR Heat 4 and you haven't bought it this game, don't buy it. Buy NASCAR Heat 4. It's $20. You're going to get the same experience except that I almost forgot if you are someone who's interested in online racing esports pro league or just regular online racing you have to get this game to participate in pro league and, and the esports stuff if you want to do random online races you could still do it on, on NASCAR E4 but most of those people move on to the next game so you're going to be in empty lobbies at some point which is something else, by the way, that doesn't work in this game either. The online racing is glitchy, laggy, and there's no explanation for any of it. But they've made it where you have to buy this game just to have access to Pro League and Esports. And that's how they get you. And that's something else that motorsport games and 704 have to take responsibility for. And these are red flags. So, I I don't know what else to say. I'm not rating this game. I'm just really disappointed that knowing full well coming in, we weren't going to get anything really substantial. It was going to be the cut and paste from last year with updated rosters and paint schemes. But they, even the paint schemes, they've taken that out re, to repackage it as DLC. They've uh, There's bugs and glitches everywhere. So what's the point of releasing the game two months early? The only person, the only people that benefits is Motorsport Games. They get, they get to profit off the game two months early. So they, they can't actually start development of the next game. Because they got to work on patching this game. They got to work on DLC anyway. And by the who knows, by the time all that's said and done, it's going to be two months anyway. So you should have just waited to release the game 
when you normally released it before, and at least you released the game in a in a in a finished condition. So you're all you're doing is hurting yourself. And I want to believe in these guys. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But every time I turn around, they're making horrible business decisions. Even the marketing, the way they marketed the game. I had to talk about that because it continues the horrible marketing. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to be fair and give these guys a fair shake. And they're making it really near close to impossible. And you Technics with the with the last game, you know, when when 704 DMR bought the the assets, they knew what it was. They sold it for 25 bucks and we were all just happy to leave you Technics behind. But that repetitive cycle of buying these games every year and then every five years, you know, they have to start from scratch or some other developer steps in and then you're doing the same thing again and again does not work. That's a business model that has failed repeatedly. There is no proof that developers actually take the support that you give them financially and actually focus on making a better game. If they make better games, that just happens to be because they chose to focus on, on making a better game. It's not because they feel obligated because people supported their earlier games. Look at Madden Football. Look at the NBA 2K Basketball Series. They've all fallen down the toilet because these developers who have more fucking money than anyone, right? So this that's another thing about... All oh, these guys are small developers. We we they need our support. Listen, it's not our responsibility to keep these people financially, uh, uh, you know, solvent. I was told that they're gonna that that Motorsport Games is gonna make a a bigger, much bigger investment in this venture. But even when people pledge a certain amount of money to, towards a project to invest. That can change. Look at everything that's happened since all these months with this pandemic, the economy. There's no, these people are not going to, you know, it's logical that they're going to step back and say, you know what, I know I pledged X amount of dollars towards this project and, and building this franchise from scratch, but I got to I gotta pull back a little now. I'm only going to invest this much this time you're going to have to make do with what you got then what we're 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 back to to the beginning i'm not an investor you're not an investor we're we're game we're gamers we're consumers we buy a product we want it to work we just want a good product this idea of we're, that we are also now investing in the future uh, to make better help the developer make better games makes no sense we don't profit from these games we don't get a percentage of the sales i bought every nascar game there is since 2002 i've never received a dime from any developer because they hey you're always buying our games every year you deserve something for that no. And every year it's the same story. Major, major features missing. So there are a lot of red flags with with uh, with this company, and I'm st I want to give them a chance. I want to, you know, I I'm, I'm going to judge them on the next game. I'm a man of my word. I said I would support this game. I bought it, but I I screwed up. I should not have bought it when it immediately came out. I should have stepped back. And I've always been against DLC. But that's on me. But I want to see what they do with the next game. And I'm going to talk about what I expect for the next console, the next game, and these consoles. And I'm going to say one last thing. Regarding these uh, advertisements and load screens. The next-gen consoles 
one of the biggest features for to me is the elimination or virtual almost elimination of load times. The PS5 is basically telling you that there's not going to be load times. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a developer or a publisher, you better tread very lightly in what you decide to do regarding, regarding advertising. If you force feed load times into these games to, to push advertisement, I'm done. I promise you I will walk away and you know I'm a small youtuber I don't have the kind of clout to to really tell people you know let's all boycott I just don't have that clout but I'll tell you one thing I I won't buy another game okay I'll find something else to play or I just you know whatever man I'm not buying a next gen console so that game developers could shoehorn advertisements and, and create load load screens. So tread very lightly, man. Start treating your customers with more respect. Work harder at the main part of the game. Stop focusing so much on esports and all this other bullshit that adds nothing to the game. And I'm I've been very supportive. I've been very fair. Very fair with, with uh, Motorsport Games and 704. But I was not expecting a game that was released uh, unfinished with all these bugs and glitches where not, none of these features work. I was not expecting for them to take out more uh, of the paint schemes that used to be part of the main game. They vir virtually stripped all of them out. Okay? And I was not expecting now this bullshit with the advertising. I don't like where this is going. So I've been more than fair to these guys, and I have to call them out on this. You guys got one opportunity, man, and I will make a video strictly focused on what I want to see in the next game, what I want to see in regards to the next gen, and what I'm expecting. And for those of you who think that I, I'm going to come out with a bunch of unrealistic you know, expectations, I'm not going to do that. I'm not stupid. I've been around a long time. I understand that, you know, when you start off from scratch and you build a game, there's a limit to what they can do. I get it. But I'm also telling these people, when you have this other business model of releasing yearly sports titles, you paint yourself in a corner and now you're just really regurgitating shit to people every year with very minor improvements. You got to do something to break that cycle. So I am expecting a fully fleshed out title uh, with the next game. I'll I will do a video going in depth about that. But those are my that's pretty much my review of this game. I'm not gonna rate it. And yeah, I I am having fun with the with the racing with against the AI for the most part. But guess what? NASCAR Heat 4 was just as fun. There's not enough difference here to justify getting it. If you if you haven't bought this game, don't buy it. Buy NASCAR Heat 4, and by the way, you're still supporting the company because you're giving them 20 bucks instead of 50 or 70, whatever, which is ridiculous. Buy NASCAR Heat 4. It's a decent game, and the racing against the AI is pretty 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 good and guess what you don't have these bugs and glitches and I haven't even gotten to all the misspellings of people of drivers names you still got NASCAR Heat 4 plastered on the on the trophies it's insulting to sell this game to people in this condition and you didn't even put the effort and time into that meanwhile you you added all this crap that nobody asked for Nobody asked for uh, esports and, and these schemes and all this stuff. You guys got to, I'm trying to help you guys. And I'm going to continue to try, but I'm telling you now, man, the last straw for me is going to be that next game. And if you guys screw that up and continue this, all this, these bad decisions, I will be done. I, I'll be done. So... Those are my thoughts. I look forward to your comments.